New York is a walking city. And when you when you read and when you walk around, you begin to understand that the buildings themselves have stories to tell about the people who live there and the great heroic acts they actually did. It is history. 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 New York City history is a rabbit hole. Black New York City history is equally fascinating. I mean, who knew about you know, these free communities. You had networks of communities of people, from churches to pastors, business people to journalists, all working together to create what we call the Underground Railroad. It becomes very clear that New York City is at the epicenter of the abolitionist movement. There's so much of this stuff, again, has been minimized or overlooked because people are like, well, it's just black history. How, how important can that be? And then when there are 50 to 75 sites that are part of the abolitionist movement and the Underground Railroad all over New York City, if we build curricula for them, then we can start to send the one million children to these sites and educate them as a matter of what it means to be a citizen of New York City. When you say Black history, that's history. It is our history. It is not just for Black people. Why is 227 Duffield Street, 227 Abolitionist Place so important? Why are the Truesdales so important? Well, let us start with the matriarch, the OG, Mama Joy. She has brought the Truesdales to life through her activism. She knew that it was the site of the Underground Railroad and she was able to find the tunnels that enslaved Africans went through that connected to other homes. She also was responsible for pulling down like the drywall and exposed a door that the enslaved Africans and indentured servants actually dropped down through that. The Truesdales, they were friends of William Lord Garrison, who was a major abolitionist. Thomas harbored the enslaved Africans and the indentured servants. David Ruggles uh, comes to mind. He's one of New York City's most famous uh, abolitionists. Worked in order to ensure the safety of, uh, we think, well over uh, a couple of thousand people. Most His most famous runaway was Frederick Douglass. Well, Sidney Howard Gay is not very widely known today, but he played a very important role in the Underground Railroad in New York. Gay. Uh, kept a record of a couple of hundred fugitives who passed through his office and who he and Louis Napoleon assisted. And this is an amazing document. Uh, it's very rare to hear the voice of so many fugitive slaves. Henry Ward Beecher, who is the pastor at Plymouth Church, he would raise money on Sundays at auctions to then uh, help a an escaped enslaved person uh, make it up north. So James Weeks and a group of black investors are buying land. The impetus for founding Weeksville was to create this, you know, free and intentional community where black people could seek the American dream like everyone else. It was a haven for African Americans seeking protection from the fugitive slave laws of 1850s. You know, and New York has a very profound story to tell that we're really missing an opportunity to tell. Some of the greatest speeches of the abolitionist movement were given here in New York City. You know, there have been some definite efforts to erase Black contribution. We need to be included. You erase that part of history, then there's a void and there's a disconnect. So when this, this developing happened, they did not ask for our opinions. You don't do that to a neighborhood, but her house was being taken from her through eminent domain. That seems very unfair. So with those elements tied into it, she gave a human face to that building. When you save that house for its history, you're saving a large piece of the puzzle that is not talked about. Thank you.
New York is not usually discussed that much when people talk about the Underground Railroad because New York was a pro-slavery city, basically. It wasn't like Boston where really the sort of tone was anti-slavery, not New York City. There was so much growth and development of New York City due to the free labor of Blacks. These beautiful buildings downtown, who do you think built that? that unquestionably uh, New York itself uh, benefited from slavery even long after New York abolished slavery. New York Harbor was absolutely critical to getting goods and materials that were produced by slave labor in the South up north and then across back to Europe. So by that point, the 1850s, you had to get to Canada. You were not safe anywhere in uh, the United States because of the fugitive slave law of 1850s. Just because you escaped to a free state it didn't mean that you were necessarily safe. What does that tell us about American history? It, it tells us that our model in our mind of, uh, is a little too simple. We are not just an asylum for the oppressed. We also are oppressors. We have the examples, we have the physical buildings that show that. So now the task to current generations is to go build on that. But if you don't know that history, then you don't know what you're building on. You think you're starting from scratch. When you're always questioning who, what, where, when, and why, and how, you're not going to be well, whether it be mentally or physically or spiritually. But knowing your history gives you the strength to persevere, to continue on, to continue looking for solutions because you know what's already been done. We've created and, and invented many things. Now it's time to recognize what we have given. I am thrilled to celebrate 227 Duffield, New York City's newest designated landmark. How did it feel to find out 227 Abolitionist Place became a landmark? It felt like my mom had a victory. My mom brought so much awareness to the abolitionist movement in downtown Brooklyn in particular. She galvanized so many people and the love that they have for not just her, but for the house and what it represents. She always said, this house is not mine. This house is ours. This house belongs to the people. When you acknowledge the full truth, we only all benefit. It is equally important to preserve Black history. I'd say particularly for Black people. Because a lot of Black people do not know and understand the richness of our contributions. As um, the old phrase says, you are standing on the shoulders of giants who came before you. And, and these giants could be just regular people who built communities. Never give up on finding out who you are. Never give up on finding what the story is behind a movement, a building, a person. And talk to your grandparents. Start recording your story. What I would like to see embed curricula about those locations into public school education to make a broad commitment to understanding what the true history of this country is all about. The real power of history is in being able to see yourself in a nation's or a city's story. You feel included, you feel important, you feel empowered. You feel that this is what I've been looking for. Thank you.